started with Steph, cause she's the best. She's gonna help you get your CTS, yeah. Ain't nothing can keep me down. Stephanie! Hey everyone, Steph Beckett here with another episode of Study with Steph. And as always, I bring on different guests to talk about the CTS process and just basically answer any questions that I have about what that is as I'm trying to get my CTS, and a lot of you are too. So with me on this episode is Luke Jordan. He's vice president and co-steward at Electro Acoustics, and he's also a member on Avixa's certification steering committee. So welcome. Thank you for having me. Glad to be here. Of course. So first things first, I would like to ask about your CTS journey. When did you get yours? Did you pass your test on the first try? And like what studying tips like or studying processes like worked for you and what didn't? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I got my CTS about 10 years ago in 2012. Uh, I was actually the first person at our company to get my CTS. Uh, so we've been in business 38 years uh, so 28 years at the time, um, what was really interesting, you know, and I'll talk about my journey in a minute, but what was really interesting is when I got my CTS or probably even when I was studying, uh, uh so I, I worked with my dad he started the company. Uh, and so I came to him and said, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm reading through the exam prep. I'm, I'm taking the test. We already do all of this. Um, you know, we're, we're already doing things by the book. Right. Uh, and, and he said, you know, since he didn't have his, he's like, one, that, that is kind of reassuring that, that we have been doing it according to industry best practices the whole time. But also that isn't by accident before things were, you know, the CTS has been around for quite a while, but I would say within the last decade, they've made it really easy to have the, they've got the online courses and the exam guidebooks that are getting updated frequently. And so that's been an easier process than it had been in the past. But the standards have been there for a long time. You know, Infocom, now VIXA, started in the 30s. And so there's always been a, a trend towards adopting standards and using them. So it wasn't a surprise that as a company, we were already doing that. But it was a little more reassuring that we can have our technicians go get the certification and they learn what the the old folks in the industry who have seen a thing or two already know. And now there's a faster way to kind of get them up to speed than there might've been in the past. Um, so like I said, I was the first one to get mine in 2012. I did not pass the first time. Uh, I failed. And I remember calling my wife. Uh, we'd been married like six months. Uh, yeah. and I, I called her and said, gosh, I'm, I'm so frustrated. I didn't pass. And she just kind of said, I told you, you should have studied more. <laughs> and so that was a, a, a knife to the gut, um, <laughs> but I passed my CTS and I'm still married. So things have worked okay, out. Okay, <laughs> great. <laughs> I'm glad that you failing the CTS did not put a wrench in your marriage. No, you can fail the CTS and stay married guys. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, well, that's like comforting to know, because I think that there is an idea that exists in the industry that like, if you fail the first time, it's like, because you like, you know, don't belong here, you're not really in the industry. Um, Like a lot of like some of the vibes that I've gotten were like, oh, well, that's because you're a journalist, you like don't do this. And I was like, well, I didn't fail by that much. Like, I, so. I did the math, I was maybe like two or three questions shy of passing. Um. And there's definitely the perspective that to be a, a really qualified AV technician or engineer, having just the book knowledge isn't all of, of what you need. I, right. I agree with that. On the job training, having actual real world working knowledge and experience, I think that really matters. So mm -hmm. I think for you, being a journalist, that's really not why you're getting your CTS, but no. you work in the AV industry. And so besides sharing your journey and what works for other people to help leave some breadcrumbs for other folks that also want that maybe for different reasons, I think that's fantastic. But for you to work in the AV industry and speak intelligently with some really brilliant, technically minded people, I think that's a got to have. And I really applaud you for doing that. Um, but so for me, if I had passed 
by two or three questions that really wouldn't have served me well since I want to be a technical in, you know, installer at the time, uh, sales manager now, you know, it, it just, it was more than just passing, but really right. that I understood the information and how to apply it in a real world job site project situation. So for me, it was discouraging in the moment because I really wanted to pass. Um, but you know, you've got 120 days to uh, retest. Um, and, and, that really lit a fire underneath me to figure out the areas that I was weak in, get help from other folks, study a little differently. And then I came back harder, passed by a, a great margin. Uh, and, and that's really when the, the six, you know, probably nine months that I'd been on the job at that point, along with the, the technical information that I really started to have a grasp on, that's really uh, fed into me promoting and having bigger responsibilities and really understanding how everything worked and why that it was a, it was a great moment yeah. in time. The, the big difference for me and how I studied before I failed and, and then after I failed and eventually passed on my second attempt. And I think it's just the way people learn. So I had the CTS prep exam guide, mm -hmm. um, but then they've got a CTS online prep course through Avix's website. And I hadn't really paid attention to that, uh, but I reached out to my, my Avix uh, uh, rep. It was Debbie uh, Seussville at the time, who had been with the organization for a long time, Mr. Dearly, and, um, and asked her what other resources were available that could be helpful. And so she steered me towards the, the online prep course. It's the exact same information, but yeah. instead of being laid out, I think there was like 13 chapters at the time. It was the first edition. It was like 50 sections and it was broken up into little, little bite size. And so there's like a little quiz at the end of every section. And so it was just, again, same information, but it was packaged in much smaller amounts. And so, I remember getting to a point where I could go through, uh, I went through the entire like 50 sections in like one day and I would, I would do that a few times. And when I got to the point that I could get near perfect on like every single quiz, that's really when I felt like I was doing okay. And there's a little bit of the bias. It's like, well, I memorized that it's the right answer, not why it's the right answer. Yeah. And you know, that's definitely there, but for me, that, that made a big difference was just repackaging the same information that that made a lot more sense to me. Did you spend a little extra time on the sections that like you felt weakest in? I would say the first time I took it, I didn't have any obvious strengths that okay. was just like, Hey, I don't, I don't need to study this part anymore because i've got that down to a science uh i i took it all i mean and a lot of it relates together mm -hmm. um i don't think a whole lot of the information on that test is completely isolated and not you're not going to see that anywhere anywhere else um so i would say that i i pretty much went through all the material over and over and over um, you know, I'd hate for something that I was strong at to become a weakness because I didn't study that's it true. between attempts. Uh, but that's me. What did you feel strongest at by the time you took the test? You know, it's been a decade, so I I don't know if I really <laughs> remember that outright. That's okay. But, but I do remember the the realization I had after I did pass is... My job as an entry-level technician, mm -hmm. I was very aware of my day-to-day, -day, my job, my responsibilities, and I really gained a much broader understanding of what the rest of the industry and the rest of the folks in my company that had a different job, I really understood what it is that they were doing, what they were responsible for, and gave me just more of an appreciation for what they had to deal with. Um, and so I remember, you know, it starts with sales and how to do a needs assessment, how to identify stakeholders, 
uh, asking questions and and then turning that over into design and making sure that you have a design that that meets their needs and their budget and and follows standards and and then all the way through shop testing and installation and service and the appropriate way to to communicate and maintain logs of service calls and all that and so that was the honestly the the biggest thing i gained you know by the time i passed the test i was more technical even yeah. before i got the little hey you pass thing i was i was ready to pass it right and and was already using that on the job site and that was a, a great help but by the time i completed it as well as having more knowledge and, and applying that on the job site just understanding what everyone else did and appreciating them for that uh, i think that's a reason in and of itself to get the cts even if you're not uh needing that to prove that you are a technical person um it it really goes a long way in just getting along with others and understanding them for sure so once you passed what made you want to join the certification steering committee well i didn't pass on my own um, yeah it, it was just a, a big part of having folks in the industry that i could reach out to talk to um who had had help earlier in their careers and were willing to pass it on um chuck espinoza and jeremy caldera are are my boys those guys are fantastic the dynamic duo yeah <laughs> <laughs> um and then me and and justin watts have also all been on the committee so the whole wolf pack has at one point or time served on that committee yeah um but you know those are those guys are just leaders in our industry and uh, I noticed that they had both chaired and served on that committee. And so really wanted to reach out to them, find out what it was about. And for the most part, the, the certification steering committee does not do the legwork uh, within, within the, the AV industry. The, the folks that really are doing the heavy lifting are the individual committees that do exam writing that mm -hmm. do uh the ethics that um help with the exam materials uh, those guys are the ones that are are really doing the hard work and the certification steering committee is very important you got to have it they're really just kind of the the oversight that makes sure that things are being done and that the cts uh, because it is an ANSI certified certification uh, mm -hmm. there's a lot of regulation that has yeah. to happen and so uh and we're going through that right now it happens every five years where they're looking at the exam questions and uh it's it's just a lot of making sure that things are, are being done right and being done properly in order to maintain that certification's status the you know the difference between having an independent certification that you and only you have recognized versus yeah. having a a regulatory organization it just adds some weight that's true uh, and i think that's that's very important but so again there's there's all kinds of committees that are really doing the work and the certification steering committee really just make sure that continues to get done and get done the the proper way um but the other big part of that too is preaching the, the value of certification and being a resource for folks that want to get certified and that seemed like a very attractive thing to me because i had a lot of help when i was coming up and wanted to make sure that everyone else understood that was there and, and how to go about getting it for sure so i want another thing i wanted to ask about so the test has changed a little bit like it used to be that you could only take it at like a pearson view center or at infocom um but now that you can take it online that's changed things a little bit like do you think that that is opening it up so that people from a lot of different backgrounds and walks of life can have an easier time like accessing the test um i think it allows people to take it on their own terms, but still have the same experience and demonstrate 
their working understanding of all the different concepts within the test. Um, so uh, Pearson is still, <clears throat> sorry, Pearson is still actually the organization that is proctoring the online exams. Okay. Um, so there's really not a whole lot of a difference uh, because it's the same company. Uh, so the online exam has been approved by ANSI. It's been vetted three times. So it's not CTS light. It's not a, yeah. a less robust exam process either. Um, but it has been vetted. There's really been no measured difference in the pass rates of the folks that have taken it online versus people that have taken it in person. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Uh, it, it's, it's been very consistent. Uh, there is a live proctor and again, Pearson is, is handling that. And so you're, you're on camera and there is someone that is, is ensuring that you are in fact you and, uh, that you are not doing anything you shouldn't be doing. Right. The, the, Two big differences between the online and the in-person exam experience. Uh, when you take the exam at a Pearson Center, they give you basically like a little dry erase board mm -hmm. that you can use to write down formulas, do math, think things through. You cannot use a notepad um, when you're taking your online exam. They do provide you with a digital whiteboard that oh. you can use on your computer. But in order to make sure that uh, you're not doing anything out of camera that you're not supposed to be doing, you have to use that digital whiteboard. The other big one is if you are in person and you need to take a bathroom break during your exam, you can. The clock is still running. It's a timed exam, uh, but you can do that when you are taking it online you have to remain in view of your camera the whole time. Uh, so unless you're willing to get very creative, there's no <laughs> bathroom breaks. <laughs> yeah, fair. Okay. <laughs> uh, so the digital whiteboard, is that like you have to like drag to like write on it or can you type on it? That like would be a game. That would be like very different for me because if mm. I could only like drag my mouse to write on it, like I would never want to take it online because like I feel like I can write on a physical whiteboard so much faster. Having not taken an online exam, I don't know the answer okay, to that. That's okay. But I'm with you on that. I think if I had to use my mouse to draw on a digital whiteboard, it would look like a, a drunk 16 year old yeah. just going nuts. Uh, <laughs> so I, I'm kind of with you on that. So, okay, this is like a personal preference question, but on some level, would you think that the online version would be like more stressful because <laughs> you just have one single person staring at you for like, I can't even remember. Isn't it like 120 minutes? Isn't that the time you're allotted to take the test? I mean, I'm one-on-one -on -one with you and you're staring at me. But I'm also <laughs> not, you're also not taking a test. Sure. The um, pressure is like less, slightly. You know, it. it's kind of like getting ready to, to, you know, play football or something. You kind of yeah. get into your, your game face and you kind of ignore true. the distractions. But that's, but that's different for every person. I could totally imagine some folks liking the idea of being in their home. They've kind of got their environment that they've curated for themselves. When you go to Pearson, I mean, it's this, it's, it's cubicles everywhere. There's other people yeah. sitting for different exams. Uh, it's, it's kind of eerily quiet. I it's mean, I true. can't, I can't have Blink-182 in the background while I'm taking my test, but it, you know, I, I've just got my sounds and my my smells and all that. So yeah. I could see, I could see that. Me personally, I I really don't work at home ever. Home's home, yeah. work's work, and I separate that. And so I I wouldn't like the idea of taking it a, around my home. Yeah, uh, that's true. You know, hear my dog scratching at the door. You know all that. Um, <laughs> a funny story when I went to sit for I think my CTSI. I had mm -hmm. my my college class ring and they said, sir, you've got to you've got to take that off. And I said, excuse me. And they said, well, you know, it's a large ring. We don't know if you've got a, a camera in there or not. Uh, <laughs> and so, I mean, that was literally like as I was walking into the room. And so, I mean, I had to go take it off. But for some reason, that kind of, you know, I was game face ready. Like, that yeah, that stresses you out. Yeah. And it, it was kind of a last minute, you know, what's going on here? 
Oh my gosh. Um, I was so nervous the first time I took mine. I was like, okay, are there, I need to make sure there's no words on my clothing. Like I need to make sure that I'm not wearing jewelry. Like, I don't know why, but I was like, I don't want to give them any reason to like pull me out of the test at all. Like what if mm -hmm. I like have a bracelet on, I'm messing with it too much and they think that's suspicious. Yeah, yeah. I was so nervous, but I honestly did really like taking it at Infocom. I think I'm going to do that again. Cause like, I don't know, everyone around me is stressed and something about that was like calming. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my god, everyone here like looks like they want to cry. Like, great, not only me. Oh no. <laughs> like, no, I mean some people, like the people who were passing, they looked good. But like the other people who were like not passing, I was like, oh yes, fellow, fellow people who failed. I like I'm to be see all of you guys at a bar later. <laughs> yeah, I was like, great, we're all gonna get together. <laughs> but okay, so Say that someone's interested in obtaining their CTS, but they're like, I don't really know what to do or like what first step to take. Like, what would you recommend? Um, the first thing I would recommend is make sure that you're an Avixa member. Uh, that could be individual. That could be through your company. Um, but that's where you've got access to the curriculum, to the online courses. Um, you know, that's a that's a huge thing right there. Um, secondly, are you aware of the AV technologist? No. Ooh. Wait, so is that a Facebook that group? Is that the Facebook group? No. Mm -mm. no, no we'll, we'll get to that. So, okay. so the CTS, the CTSI, and the CTSD are the three ANSI certified uh, AV certifications that Avixa has. But there is an AV technologist it's not a certification. I don't know the right word for it. I'm going to call okay. it a badge of honor. A badge. Um, and I would say that probably if you get your CT, uh, your AV technologist, you probably have like 60 to 70% of what's on the CTS figured out. Okay. And so the, the prep materials for the AV technologist is the Avixa Essentials of AV online course. Okay. Uh, I think that's like a 20, 25 hour uh course load but so you uh you can take your av technologist it's free you can retake it as many times as you want it's not proctored it's not regulated you can just take it at, at home and so uh, we we have uh requirements for certification tied to different positions within our company okay and, and when we when we hire somebody and let's say they've got a great work ethic uh, a winsome personality, good values. They're a good fit for our company and they know squat about AV, but they would really like to. We, we hire some mm -hmm. of those guys all the time. We have a, we have a farm system, right? And yeah. so we will put together kind of a, a 90 day plan for them. Welcome aboard. Here's what you're going to be. You're going to be doing a lot of wire pulling. You're going to be doing some terminations. You're going to have to learn all of that, but we also want you to do some book learning to help catch you up on what this stuff is and all that. Okay. And so that AV technologist is usually on our 90 day plan for folks. If they can put in the, the effort, get that AV technologist, it's, you know, low risk, low reward, but then they will have a head start on the, the knowledge that goes with that, that, and then they, they pass that and they say, yeah, I do kind of understand this now. That is a great confidence booster and is a really good way to get on that journey towards getting your CTS. So if you're not aware of that stuff, 90 days, I want to yeah. see Yeah. Okay. All right. I mean, like, you know, if I can just take it however many times, I feel great about that. I feel like I could do that. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. And does it, does it like, does anyone get told or like notified, like how many times you took it? I couldn't tell you that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> like, is there a person out there who feel like she took this <laughs> test 27 times? But you know what? If you took it 27 times and passed. It's great. Good. That's all that matters, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so then to go along with that, there is a CTS professionals Facebook group that Chuck, Jeremy, Justin, and I uh, run. And again, there's a lot of folks talking about, hey, I'm... I'm studying. What do you recommend? What are some good resources? Do you have any, you know, tips on that? Um, part of getting your CTS is signing an agreement that you yeah. will not tell other people what's on the test. So 
I would not expect anyone to tell you this is on the test or yeah. this is important, but this is not. And you don't need to worry about that. Well, but everyone's really tests more... are also different, right? So like sometimes like mine could have a ton of like project management questions, mm -hmm. but that's not necessarily what someone else is going to get on their test, right? Right. There's there's 110 questions on your CTS. 10 of them are new questions that are being tried out, but yeah. don't count and you don't know which 10 they are. Um, but there's more than 110 questions that could be pulled from to form your exam. Right. And so, yeah, everyone's going to be a little different. Um, but that's why it's ANSI regulated is yeah. so the people that actually write the exam questions and the people that write the exam prep materials do not talk. There is a, a wall of separation between those two. Right. And so some, some folks will say, Hey, I've, I passed. It's great. But there are some questions that I never saw in the exam guide. That's probably going to happen. Yeah. And, and so, and I don't know if that was your experience, but yeah, I mean, it was, I was like, <laughs> there were like maybe a couple where I was like, what the hell is this? I've never heard of this in my life. Right. And, and so the, the harsh thing with that is that's the difference between I understand the concepts and I understand what the question and answer in the book was. Yeah. And, yeah. and so if you have no background in AV, you read the, exam prep book, you may or may not be ready to take the test. Yeah. Um, and I remember when I got my CTSI, there, there was no book. Uh, they only had the CTS exam prep book. And so there was three online courses and... No. So the predecessor to the CTS iBook was called the AV Best Practices Handbook. Oh, is that the like little, the is that the black book? book it was a blue whatever. book on like a spiral, yeah. spiral binding. Um, and I remember reading that and it had, you know, how to terminate and calibrate five wire analog BNC video connections with an oscilloscope. And I said, we don't do this anymore. Uh, I'm just not going to study this. And if they ask me anything, this is going to be one I'm definitely going to get wrong. Yeah. But there's just, and, and, you know, it, it wasn't even on the test by that point. And that's why okay. that was outdated. And they created the CTSI prep book. But so again, I reached out to Debbie. I'm like, Debbie, I've read this book, but I don't, I don't feel ready. What right. can I do? And she, and then she said, well, there's three online CTSI, uh, courses and you can take, uh, AV math essentials and, and and again, Avixa has a really good curriculum uh, li library right. of of things you can do. But again, not everything you need might be in the exam guide because okay. it's a different group of people that are writing the exam questions. And so you might have to pull from on the job knowledge, the prep book, and then some of the different courses that Avixa have that that manufacturers have to really understand the principles behind how everything is the way it is and why. Yeah. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. That's like, there are pluses and minuses to that, but I get why it is that way. And I remember when I, I took the CTS prep class at a, uh, Infocom with Chuck and Jeremy, and I remember someone being like, whenever anyone would ask a question about, oh, will this be on the test? They'd be like, there's one rule. The first rule is I don't know what's going to be on the test. I can just teach you these things that we think you should know. Yeah. But like, we don't know exactly what questions you're going to get. So fair. Um, My last like big question for you, and this is like not really for me to worry about right now, but maybe for other people who are wondering about this, like how do you get CTSRUs? How many do you need? What do you have to do to get them? And yep. yeah, how often do you have to do it? So you need to get 30 RUs every three years. Okay. If you fail to do that, then you have to retake the exam. Um, Nobody probably wants to do that. <laughs> no. Um, so there's a few different ways that you can get that. 
um, pretty much you get RUs, you get one RU for about every hour you spend doing continuing education. Okay. So Avixa hosts regular webinars that are an hour long, so you get one RU. Uh, manufacturers have have courses that have been approved by Avixa for different amounts of RUs. Uh, if you have your CTS I, mm -hmm. there are some courses that may provide an RU for a CTS, but maybe not for a CTS I. Okay. Uh, but then there's other courses that if you have all three, this course will will provide an RU regardless of which CTS certification you are trying to maintain. Okay. Um, do you have to, do you then get one for an I and one for the regular, or do you have to pick which one it goes to if it's like that? No, you, you, you only need 30 every three years. So it, if, if you have your CTS I and your CTS D, you don't need 60. Oh, okay. You, you just need 30 that apply to all three. So okay. if you do have uh, a, a manufacturer's course that gives you one RU for CTS, but does not give you an uh, RU for your CTSD, I wouldn't take that course if you're trying to maintain your CTSD. Okay. Uh, so Avixa does have a, a list on their website. It's avixa.org slash CTS-RU-Providers. CTS and it is a list of all the manufacturers, what courses they offer, and how many RUs you will receive for taking and passing that course towards which CTS certification okay. you are trying to maintain. The CTS, uh, sorry, Avixa has their own courses as well. So if you take Essentials for AV, you get like 20 something RUs. It's fantastic. They've got a project, project management for AV course that uh, last time I took it, I got 10 RUs to take that course. So some of them, it's you get one hour, but you only sacrifice about an hour of your time. Right. And then others, you know, I might be able to take two to five courses and knock out my 30 RUs, uh, but it probably took a whole Saturday. Yeah. So it, it there's different ways to get there. And so this is something that the, the steering committee does is we, we meet about once a week to review manufacturers who are submitting a course that they're developing for CTS RUs. Um, and so the goal that the committee has is we love our manufacturers. We wouldn't be able to build anything without them. Some tend to be more helpful as far as here's how HD base T works and here's why, and here's how it continues to be a really good way of transmitting video and others are more of a sales pitch on, right. Hey, we have this product and we think that you should know about that. And so we, we want it to be slightly agnostic. Right. Um, ag again, using your products that you make as an example of how this technology is applied that's going to happen, but it needs to be driven more by the, the physics, the, the science behind why this is needed, how it works, how to correctly sell, design, and calibrate it, and, and things and best practices to do or avoid. Um, and so you can, you can work with the manufacturers and take their courses directly. Um, get your CTS renewal units, maintain your certification, but then learn more about the manufacturer's products that they use and, and how to use those correctly, which goes a long way. It'll be interesting. I'll have, you know, some, some newer technicians on a job site and we'll be having wireless mic interference. And because I've taken my, my sure level two certification, uh, you know, I've, I've sat through their courses and it says, you know, Hey, if you're going to be, Using wireless mics, you need to have at least a quarter wave of, of separation between your uh, your your antennas. So probably need to he keep those six feet apart. Doesn't matter whose wireless mics you need, that's true. But then yeah. I also learned more about the features that Sure's mics has. And since I'm in a sales position, it's important that I understand 
is this an appropriate solution for this client? And here's the features and explaining that as I'm helping them figure out what they want and what it's going to cost. So it really works really well when it's done right. Yeah. My last question is, is can you keep track of where you are with RUs like on Avix's website when you like log in? Yeah. So when you log in, when you log in, uh, you can access your CTS transcript. And okay. so it'll show you for your current renewal cycle, here's the courses that you have taken. Here's how many RUs they were worth. You need okay. 30. You have this many. And you've got until this date to complete that. Okay. Um, some of the courses you take by completing the course, the, the manufacturer will automatically send a VIXA notice that you have completed that course and therefore you should be awarded this many RUs. Uh, some of them, you will get a piece of paper from the manufacturer that you then have to submit to Avixa yourself. And okay. if you don't report your RUs, you don't get awarded them. Okay. So it's, it's definitely worth, if you're taking a course in person or online from a manufacturer, that you have a understanding of whose responsibility is this, but then you can also check your CTS transcript. So if you're at a Almo E4 event and you yeah. take a, a class, a couple of weeks later, I would check your CTS transcript and follow Let's up with sure whoever you were, were talking to. Hey, I noticed this hasn't made it to my Vixer portal yet. What gives? Okay, fair. Last question I have for you is, as I'm studying to take my test a second time, what is some advice that you have for me? Hmm. <clears throat> don't stress. Okay. It's going to be okay. Um, I think people that put too much pressure on passing are focused on passing. Yeah. Uh, having an understanding of, of the, the technology, the principles behind it, how people are working together to solve problems. That's, that's why certification exists so that it doesn't matter who's doing it, that it's going to get done in a way that is consistent, repeatable, reliable, that someone could come behind you and, and continue to move things forward. And so certifications provide that because they point to standards. And so being, being better technicians, uh, being better journalists, being better marketing professionals, being better business leaders, it all comes back to standards, consistency, and, and being certified. And so I think by focusing on that value, rather than having a couple letters after your name, I think that goes a long way. Okay. So no stress. You'll get it when you get it. It, it takes some people a few weeks and they're brilliant and probably better test takers than I am. Yeah. Took me two tries. Uh, takes everyone a different amount of time. But if you're persistent and you don't quit and you have a good attitude about it, it'll happen in the right time. And that's okay. All right. I appreciate that. That was actually really good advice. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I think that was the last um, question I had for you, but well, how can people contact you if they would like to connect with you or learn more? Um, I know that you mentioned the Facebook group. Could you tell me what that's called again? Uh, CTS Professionals. Okay. And uh, the logo, as you're searching, is the CTS logo. So kind of you know red and yellow circle. Um, I'm on Twitter at Luke Jordan E A V I. Um, I'm on. I'm I'm everywhere. So okay. <laughs> Me, Perfect. Uh, my, my email is ljordan at eavi.com. I don't give a crap. Come get in my inbox. Say hi. No nudes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. No nudes. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you so much for hopping on this episode. I really appreciated it. And I appreciate your advice and your insight. And I hope that this helps me pass a second time, but I have a good feeling about this one. You have what it takes. I believe in thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. This has been another episode of Study with Steph, and you can listen on YouTube or on the Ray Pubs website or wherever else you listen to podcasts. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Study with Steph, because she's the best.